episode of Super Reaction Bros. I'm Chris. I'm Christopher. And on today's episode, we're taking a look at Screen Rings Pitch Meeting for Independence Day. Yes, July 4th has come and gone, but we cannot talk about not talk about July 4th without talking about one of the most prolific movies of this month. The 1776 musical. Oh, sorry. Wrong one. Uh, the... Um, it's a, it's a really good movie. Uh, no, this is talking about the 90s smash hit starring Will Smith, Bill Pullman, oh, Jeff Goldblum, Paul oh. Vivica Fox as a stripper. Um, yeah, Independence Day. So, Roland Emmerich, who's now known for making... Disaster films. For pretty much blowing up the earth by this yeah, point. Yeah, destroying the world. And, and, doing a sh and doing a Shakespeare film. <laughs> yeah, that's so. I heard it was actually pretty good. That but, um, good. yeah... This is how we got to know Roland Emmerich. This was the this his is his titular, this was his introduction to Hollywood in a way. In layman's terms, aliens show up and wreck our shit. That's about it. And then Bill Pullman gives a really amazing speech that's remembered for the rest of the time. And, and we all history. And we'll never forget how Randy Quaid saved the world. Yes. That, that you know, I always get Randy down. and Dennis Quaid mixed up. I don't. No, th just their name sometimes. No, I know, no, I understand. I know that's Randy, I know it's Dennis, but why? But let's it? see, is this, let's this dive into what possibly went behind making uh, this great, honestly, for me, for, 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 for us as well, growing up with it, this great, fun flick of, of an uh, just, alien takeover. <laughs> so here we go for Independence Day pitch meeting. So here we go. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's gonna be called Independence Day. Okay, so like a historical drama based around the signing of the Declaration of Independence. No, 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 like a sci-fi action We're based happy. around America kicking alien butt. Oh! And the aliens going pew, 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 pew. With the spaceships? With their freaking spaceships. <laughs> With their pew, 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 pew. With their spaceships? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the beginning of the movie, we're going to see this big shadow starting to cover the moon. That's not good. The moon is pretty close to Earth. It is. So then down on Earth, humans, they start to notice. They're like, whoa, this thing is huge. It's like a quarter of the size of the moon. And they only discover this once it reached the moon. Somehow, yes, that's right. And then we're going to start to meet the characters of the movie. Okay, who are these characters? We're going to be following the president, Thomas Whitmore, the first lady, Marilyn, the president's advisor, Constance, her ex-husband, David, his father Julius, a pilot, Captain Hiller, his wife Jasmine, who's a stripper, also her son, also an alcoholic crop duster, pilot Russell, and his whole family. Wow, that's a lot of people. Are you people. gonna have enough time for character development? No, 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 no. At least no, ten, no. Okay, at least yeah, ten no, different no, no. stories. We're just gonna assign them each a broad stereotype and kind of roll with that. That works for me. Anyway, so these aliens, they set up a bunch of massive flying saucers directly over popular landmarks. Why do they do that? Because it's gonna look cool in the trailer. No. I'm glad that these aliens are considerate of our marketing strategy. <laughs> David, he realizes that all these ships are communicating and coordinating using our satellites. The high-tech aliens don't have better means of communication? Well, we're going to find out that they're telepathic, but they're going to use our satellites. Why? So David can pick up on it and the movie can happen. That works. And he's like, oh, they plan to attack in six hours. Six hours? Why the long wait? So the humans have a bit of time to prepare and the movie can happen. That works. So then the aliens do attack and they destroy a bunch of cities and there's going to be a bunch of crazy action. Yeah, what kind of action are we talking? Well, a bunch of landmarks are gonna blow up. Jasmine's gonna be in an exploding tunnel and her and her dog are just barely gonna make it into a doorway. Yeah. 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 Fire can't go through doorways. No, it can't. I mean, fire doesn't have eyes, so it doesn't see them turn the corner. And the intense heat doesn't affect them or the lack of oxygen. Doesn't fire use oxygen? Isn't that how fire works? Oh, you said fireworks. That's fun. Oh, fireworks are tight. I forgot what I asked you. Yeah, same here. All I can think of are fireworks now. Same here. So what else happens? Well, David and his father, they're going to end up with the president and his staff. Okay. And David's father is going to be like, hey, what about Area 51? Didn't you guys find aliens or something? And the president's going to be like, yeah, no, that never happened. Oh, bummer. But then the secretary of defense, he's going to be like, actually, no, yeah, we did find some aliens there in a spaceship, too. If he knew about that, why didn't he mention that as soon as aliens arrived? I don't know. 
very bad. Yeah. So they head over to Area 51, and this wacky scientist guy, he's like, yeah, this spaceship has been acting up for the past 24 hours. It's kind of crazy. And nobody informed the White House? They didn't, no. Well, okay, then. Oh, also, we're going to have this big battle between fighter jets and spaceships, and that guy, Captain Hiller, he's going to be right in the thick of it. Very, very cool. And his best friend's going to be killed, so he's going to be super emotional about that for, like, an entire shot. Wow, yeah. Yeah, he he's really, really doesn't grief, for sure. care he's after gonna be chased around by an alien <laughs> spaceship, and he's going to manage to make it crash. Very exciting. And then the alien ship opens up, and an alien pops out, and he punches it right in the exoskeleton and knocks it out for several hours somehow. Wow, 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 wow. Welcome and he looks to at Earth. the alien, and he's like, welcome to Earth. That's a good line. And then he grabs that's a good line. And he's like, now that's what I call a close, close encounter. encounter. This guy's got a bunch of jokes. His friend just died. Yeah, he's got a ton of jokes. So then <laughs> his friend just died. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got, got a ton of jokes. Okay. And so people start dissecting the alien, but then it kills a bunch of people, and it mind controls the main scientist guy. Oh, interesting. So it's going to attempt some kind of clever escape where it pretends to be the scientist? That's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it's not going to do that. Instead, it's just going to be like, release me. Oh, yeah, okay, different strategy. He's going to be like, release me. You're all going to die. And so the humans, they shoot it dead. I mean, I don't know what the alien was expecting on that one. Yeah, hard to say. So then Captain yeah. Hiller, he borrows a helicopter, and he goes to pick up his wife, who, as it turns out, is hanging out with the first lady. Wow, well, it's going to be hard for him to find them in the midst of a destroyed city. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? I, no. I realize that's his mom's signature line. Super, line. super easy, barely inconvenient. Or something. He, just, he just lands right in front of them. Yeah, he's lazy. You're like, okay, they okay, know fast. So anyway, then that David guy, he figures out a plan for defeating the aliens. Oh, and what's his plan? He wants to give them a computer virus on their mother's I know. Oh, a computer virus. Yep, yeah, because as you know, computers are capable of literally anything. And all their operating systems are the same, and they're made of magic. Oh, I am well aware that computers can do anything. Isn't that right, computer? That is correct, producer guy. Would you like a hamburger? Here is a hamburger. Maybe later. I'm all good for now, computer. Thanks. No worries. You just let me know, okay? So what happens next? <laughs> well, they let all the other countries... Just gonna ignore that. ...and all yeah. the other countries are like, finally, the Americans have a plan. All other countries are helpless. I was actually surprised in my research that there are actually, you know, other countries. I was also quite shocked <laughs> when I found that out last week. Pretty cool. Last week. How do they plan on getting this virus onto the alien computer? Well, they have this old ship from the 1950s, and Captain Hiller, he saw the aliens flying one. Oh, that's right. He saw them fly once, so he could totally pilot that thing. Obviously. So he and David, they head up to space with the computer virus. This is all making a ton of sense. It sure is, sir. So they head up to the mothership, and they're let right in. And the fact that they show up on a decades-old missing ship doesn't raise any red flags? It doesn't. No. Fantastic. So then down on Earth, there's this massive dog this fighting This is big alien ship. Seems kind of irrelevant to the story. What are the dogs fighting about? No, these are actually humans inside jets fighting aliens in spaceships. Oh, okay, yeah. Don't even show the dogs. I say. Yeah, sir. Sure. Okay, good idea. Good idea. What the <laughs> what? They all run out of missiles, except for that crop duster guy, Russell. Okay. And his missile gets jammed, so he flies right into the ship into a weak spot, and he's like, I'm back. What? Because he had been abducted by aliens, like, years before, and they did weird stuff to his butt, probably. Oh, so you do have character development. Yeah, I guess I do. Yes, I do. Captain Hiller and David, they get back down to Earth, and they have cigars, and they have women, and everything worked out. Well, millions of people died, though, right? Yes. Yeah. But America. That's a good point. So what do you Yes, think but America. America. That's a good point. Dog moment you tried to squeeze in. I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Thank you. And I mean, someday, if we're really, really desperate for ideas, we could find a way to make a sequel. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that happened. That, that happened. Yeah. I watched that sequel, and they should just left it alone. Just put it this way. Let's put it that way. They try. It's the same. It's like All they, I know is I didn't want to watch after they confirmed they were killing off Will Smith's character. I know. I think that's one person that a lot of people were kind of pissed off at because at the same time it interfered with his scheduling. That's why. So they're like, you know what? We don't have time to wait. Let's just we're just gonna kill off your character. But yeah, the first over a test flight. Yeah, but uh, I'll, don't don't get me started on that. But first film wise, first film wise, the film was good. Uh, the film was enjoyable. Has, yeah, has a, obviously has a lot of problems with it, but it made Will Smith a standout blockbuster movie star. Oh, yeah. It gave, gave an urge for all of us to love and enjoy the surrealness that is Jeff Goldblum. It also gave us a reason to start loving or start start to try to enjoy disaster films, because like, like they said pretty much when you have a disaster film... You have to follow a bunch of people's stories all together at some point, you know? It's like... And there is... You can tell they didn't have a lot to, like, 
jab at. Usually these are longer. This is the one of the shorter ones we've seen. And like they, they didn't bring up Bill Pullman's speech. They did. No. They didn't bring up because they, they're going over. They they went over some of the stuff that just was like, yeah. They need more explain. You know, explain like how Will Smith found, you know, his uh, fiance so quickly and stuff like that. Or the obvious fact that wow, he really didn't care about his friend after he died. I know, right? Where it's just like he had this close relationship with his friend. And it's like he died, and it was just boy. Even afterwards, he was like, "Oh, I'm having a cigar," even though my friend just died. He does everything. So it's 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 one of those words. Like they went over some of the moments that just yeah, it really had you think going, really, because the rest of it was fantastic. They did a great job. Um, and like I said, for the sequel that I saw, I think they just I think they should just left it alone because the sequel just felt like they were like, "Let's go over the top," and they went way over the top and just forgot about the story. Yeah, so other than that, if you're new to the channel, you can hit the like button if you want to talk to us more about stuff like this. Comment down below if you want to share us around, share it around, and if you like it's just a little bit more. Anybody else, when it comes to talking about screen rants, pitch meetings, hit the subscribe button down below, and hit that bell icon as well. Let us know what you guys' thoughts are on this screen rant. Did you agree to everything they said? Do you, do you enjoy, do you actually just enjoy the film like, like us? I mean, can't get really tired of it. It's actually a fun film to watch. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Um, but... You know, it was more of a de de defining moment for what a disaster film should... Pretty much, it, it set up what the formula should be like ever since that movie came out. You know, um, but, you know, let us know what you guys' thoughts are on it. Uh, do you, did you enjoy it? Did you have fun with it? Any favorite moments from the film? What do you think of their, uh, their pitch meeting for it? You know, and what's your favorite uh, disaster movie, pretty much, that you've grown up with? Uh, put down to that of our reaction as well, but most importantly, thank you for watching. So until next time, I'm Chris. And I'm Christopher. And this has been a very ID4 filled episode of SRV. See ya. Later. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to check out our previous reactions, or any one of our other SRV shows, check out one of our playlists down below. And if you want to check us out in the social universe, you can find us on Twitter and Stardust at Super React Bros.